words could never say the way he says my name he calls me lovely no one ever sees the way he looks at me he sees me holy words could never hold this love that burns my soul heaven holds me oh heaven holds me can't hold my love back from you can't hold my love back from you I gotta sing I gotta sing sing my love 
God to open up heaven for us this morning. Let's just lift up our hands this morning. Come on, do you hear the sound of that rain coming? I just believe that God is doing something in each of your lives this morning. There's some prayers that you've been praying. There's some things that you've been believing for, and I want to declare to you today that God has heard your prayers. Come on, let's just welcome Holy Spirit. We just thank you that you are here this morning. I thank you that you see every detail of our lives. Come on, some of you, you think that God has forgotten about some things, but I want to tell you, He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And Father, we just thank you this morning that you hear the prayers of your people. Thank you, Lord. And I want to declare that there is a shift coming. 
Come on, some of you, you've been stuck for seasons after seasons, and you think it was designed for your life. But I want to declare to you today that there's a shift coming in your life. There's a shift coming from the Spirit of God, and it's going to take you from where you are to where you've prayed and desired to be. So this morning, if that's you this morning, I want you to just lift up your hands and let the, just respond to the Holy Spirit. Father, that is me. I have been stuck, and I am ready to move from this place and I'm ready to walk into the promises that you have for me. I want to declare today that this is an atmosphere for miracles. Whatever you have need of this morning, there's not one thing that's too big for God. There's not one thing that God can't do. I don't know what the mountain looks like today, but I want to tell you about the mountain mover. His name is Jesus. He walks on water. He multiplies food. He makes a way where there is no way. That's the God that we serve. And so whatever you have need of this morning, I want to declare to you, nothing is too hard for God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, his presence is here in this room. Let's just look at him face to face for a moment. Jesus, we honor you. You're the reason that we're here today. There's no one in the world like you. Come on, tell him how much he means to you this morning. You rescued me because you delighted in me, Lord. Thank you, Father. I wanna to declare to you today that your ladder is gonna be greater than the former things. The future is gonna look a whole lot better than the past. If you're just believing for that shift this morning, as we just go back into worship, I just want you to connect with God more than you ever have. Just put your gaze on Him this morning. I'm telling you, things in your life start looking a lot smaller when you start looking at your big God. Thank you, Lord. to break free right now. It could be physically, it could be financially, it could be in your marriage, it could be in your health. Come to the front right now. We are going to pray and see heaven open up over your life. Strongholds are broken. Addictions are gone. The enemy tried to take some of y'all out. Oh no, not today, say not tomorrow either. I'm telling you, this is your breakthrough moment. This is going to be the time that God is going to give you that revelation that you needed for your life, for your ministry, for your business, for your breakthrough. This is the season, this is the time that the church is going to be awakened to step into everything that God has called you, the church, your ministry, business, everything. I declare it today. Something is about to move in your life. It's going to move in your midst. 
This is the moment that everything shifts and everything changes in the mighty name of Jesus. In this room, Holy Spirit, move. Cause when you have your way, something has to break, tear down every lie, set the wrong things right, when you have your way, something has to break, something has to break, something has to break.
Norman singing, this is a house of miracles. I look at our sign over here and it says, there will be miracles. So hey, let's see some miracles. So who in here needs physical healing in your life? Physical healing, if you need physical healing, come up. We're gonna pray for some healing today. Just total restoration of your physical body. It could be your mental mindset, whatever it may be. I declare physicals are going to happen in this place today. If you need a physical healing, we're believing and praying right now it's going to happen. Wow, everybody's healed today. All right. Huh. Okay. This is the house of healing. Our hearts are full of faith. You have our full attention. You have the final say. This is a house of healing. Our hearts are full of faith. You have our full attention. And you have the final say. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of me. To the feet of Jesus, everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. There's resurrection power. And your blood runs through our veins. Your kingdom triumphs over even the coldest grave. There's resurrection power, and your blood runs through our veins. Your kingdom triumphs over even the coldest grave. We sing, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of me. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We sing, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to your feet. Jesus, everything in your name, Jesus, this is a house for me. glad that we serve a living God. Amen. That he's here to meet every one of our needs and he's not boring. He is alive. If your life with God is boring, you need to, you need to enter in. Amen. Because he 
is adventurous. He's an ever-present help in time of need. I have never met anyone like Jesus my entire life. There's no one like him. Aren't you so glad that he's here in this room today and he has you on his heart? He has you in mind this morning. And so if you feel forgotten, if you feel like you're on the outside, I want to invite you in to a relationship with God that's like no other relationship you've ever had. Amen. So let's just lift our hands one more time if you feel comfortable and say, I want that. I want that relationship with you, God. I want that nearness to you, God. I want to know you. I want to go on an adventure with you. I want you to speak to me in the morning when I wake up and hear me at night when I go to bed because you're alive and you're real and you love me deeply. I want you to get that down in your spirit this morning. He loves you deeply. Doesn't matter what yesterday looked like. His love for you is strong enough. Thank you, Lord. And so, Father, I pray that your word would just touch our hearts this morning. I pray that it would transform us. I pray that it would come alive to us and speak to us so that we can be more like you. We thank you that your word is powerful. Awesome. Excited about what all God is going to do today. We are, we are just seeing God do amazing things here at Roar Church. Amen. Amen. And as, as the kids, just be blessed. Uh, God is raising up firebrands back there. Amen. Uh, to be apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers and pastors. Amen. I um, have been pondering all, a lot over the past two years, and, and if you've heard me You've heard me speak over the last six months. I have probably three out of the six times preached on the premise of, of peace. And so um, I was thinking in, the, in that line, I could not get away from, from this one uh, thing that the Lord was telling me this week. So I'm going to kind of dive back into that and kind of uh, connect two of the messages that I've spoken over the last um, few months. But I think, I think peace is something that we all find, but I think these last few years have been something interesting because there's something that's been released in the world that uh, fear has become the currency of the day. And currency is something that has to be exchanged. So if you go to a store and you give, you give someone money, they give you a good in exchange, right? So fear has become that currency of, of the past two years. It, it's, it's, there, there's been an attempt to get... get everyone in the world to exchange peace and to, to take on fear. Now, I'm not discounting, you know, if, 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 if someone has, has um, passed or gotten sick, or I'm not discounting anything that's happened, but I think that that's something that's been, been going on in the past two years. And I think, and I not think, I know that God and his people are raising up and, and standing in a place of peace to, to know that, that we don't stand in a place of fear, that we stand in a place of, of knowing that we are the sons and daughters of Jesus Christ, and that we, we, don't, we don't exchange anything that God has given us for anything that the world has. Amen? Amen. So I, I believe that that's, that's why God has had me on this the past two years, but I got to thinking about this a, a, a few days ago. Um, we, we, of course, we have a, a little girl, uh, seven months old, love her to death, honor Marie. And uh, so she, when she goes down at night, Michelle begins to turn on this thing that at first I had no clue what it was. I would hear this, and it would sound like a dryer at night. You know, these, these, these like sound machines that they've invented that, that go all over the house and that are connected and interconnected and come on your phone. And it, you guys know this, that, that have had, had children within the last, you know, few years. And, and so these things are, are, are great. Uh, if, if that's how you relax and how you go to sleep, but if, if it's not, it is, it is not, it is not good for you. But, um, so, but they have dryer, they have ocean sounds, they have the, they have all these different sounds that are, are meant to get you to relax because this is a, an attempt to bring calm, uh, to the, to the child. It's an attempt to bring a relaxing to the child. So everything on the sound machine is in there so that it can bring these sounds that will bring the baby to a place of rest. So it's an attempt to calm so they can relax. It drowns everything out. So these are great for moment, moment, oh, momentary escapes of reality, especially with babies. Now, one thing that we've, we've done with Honor, every single night we pray peace over her. 
So this, this little machine has not replaced what we asked the Lord to come in her room and, and come over her and do, right? So these, 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 these things that we have available to us, and I'm using the, the, the picture of a, a baby sound machine, these things that we have available to us in the world that are meant to bring us peace are only meant to bring us a momentary escape from reality. So when we when we disconnect from from the world for a moment, when we when we read a book, when we we when we relax, those are only meant to bring us momentary. But I want to see us bring the peace of God in our households today to this fullness. And God does that through us, and He does it through through one way. Because for us as believers, we have found this in the past two years that Jesus is the fulfillment of peace. And that's what I've been hearing over the entire week, that Jesus is the fulfillment of peace. So Jesus is peace. We see this in John 14, 27. This is a verse I've used, but, but I'm going to use a couple of different things, and, and I'll show you why, a couple of different verses from the Scripture. But John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you, but let your hearts not be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So, over the, over the past few years, I've unexpectedly gained something as I've learned to surrender everything to the Lord, and I've gained peace. I'm assured that Christ alone is the giver of peace. So first, it's important for us to recognize that this verse tells us peace is not found. It's not found of the world, ourselves, circumstances, comfort, all of that which tends to give us peace, just like that, that sound machine. But Christ has made it clear in his word that the peace we seek is given bought, assured, and sustained by Jesus Christ alone. So let, let's break that down. The first thing is, is that Jesus is the purchaser of our peace. So we as a church of believers, even, even as Apostle Joe referenced our sign, we, we are a church that believes in miracles. We're a church that believes in Isaiah 53. And so this is what stuck out to me over this week as Jesus being the purchaser of our peace. Isaiah 53, 5 is a, a verse that we see in the Old Testament that we, we attribute to God telling us or, or the cross giving us as believers when we come into salvation, when we come into to right salvation with Jesus Christ, that we receive healing through that. Not only do we receive salvation, but we receive healing. But this verse also tells us that we we uh, receive something else that we're talking about today. Uh, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5 says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes we are healed. So we are given peace. And a lot of times that's what the enemy attempts to take away from us. That's why I used uh, currency as, as the picture of what the world is trying to get us to, to, because you've got to give your peace away. A lot of times it'll be attempted to, take, to be taken away from you by the circumstances of life, by the things going on in the world, but you have to ultimately give it away. You can't, because it's been something that's been given to us by, by Jesus Christ through what he did uh, in his, his uh, going to the cross. So Jesus gave up himself in our place to take the wrath of God upon himself in order that we would be reconciled to God through his blood. So this is atonement for our sins. Because of this, only believers of Jesus Christ can be filled with peace since peace is birthed from a fixed trust in Christ, something the world can never know apart from Jesus Christ. So this is why it is, is key for the believers. That's why we see in Philippians 4, which is, which is a, a verse that we see where, where um, Paul tells us to not be anxious for anything, but through all things through prayer and supplication, make a request unto God that the peace that passes all understanding would guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So there's so much more there than just the peace that passes all understanding. It tells us that he'll guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. He tells us not to be anxious for anything through that. He also tells us that he will uh, guard us in everything through that. So, so us that have been forgiven, covered by the blood of Jesus, can be truly at peace with God the Father. Any attempt to bring peace uh, to the world from, pe from the peace of Christ will always fall short. Amen? Number two, Jesus Christ, he's the assurance of our peace. We see this in Isaiah 32, 17. It says, the work of righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. So the sanctifying work of Christ produces in us the fruit of righteousness. I'm going to say that one more time. 
The sanctifying work of Christ produces in us the fruit of righteousness. This is not righteousness of ourselves, but the righteousness of Christ being made our own, which is proof of the Holy Spirit's work in our life. You see, because peace is a fruit of the Spirit. So it is a picture of the Holy Spirit's work in and through our lives. The fruit of righteousness brings peace. There was a, um, a preacher back in the 1600s. It was John Gill. Uh, if anyone's got an exposition of the entire Bible, that's what he wrote in the, uh, mid, uh, in the mid-1600s. And so he was one that would um, was an expositor of the, uh, of the Bible, but wrote ultimately what we eventually saw as commentaries. So he wrote something about peace, and, and when he was breaking down from Isaiah talking about peace. He said, inward of the peace, inward peace of soul now and eternal peace hereafter, the righteousness of Christ applied removes guilt of sin from conscience. That's salvation, being perfectly justified from all things and yields serenity of mind, that being the peace of God, which is had in a way of believing in this righteousness now and will issue everlasting peace in the rest in the world to come. The end of the perfect and the upright man, perfectly justified in Christ's righteousness, is the fullness of peace. Amen. In other words, as the fruit of righteousness of Christ bears witness in our life, it produces in us a confident assuredness to the quietness of the soul under a mighty hand of God. So the byproduct of assurance is a steadfast and an unwavering peace in Christ, which enables us to persevere through even the greatest trials. This assurance that we have in the, with the peace of God is how we end up encountering believers that have gone through things that our human minds can't even imagine. And they've gone through that because they've had the peace of God to hang on to through everything that, that's happened. And not discounting the, the, the grief that might have happened or what the, the things that might have happened to a believer. But God brings a peace that, that nothing in the world can even satisfy the same thing. Amen? Amen. The third thing, Jesus is the sustainer of our peace. Again, in Isaiah verses 20, or chapter 26, verse 3 and 4, it says, You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord our God is an everlasting rock. Everlasting rock. So perfect peace is whose mind is stayed on Jesus. Perfect peace is whose mind is stayed on Jesus. Trusting in Christ is what saves us. Keeping our mind stayed on him is what sustains us. So we, we, have, we have salvation in Jesus Christ from our trust in Jesus Christ, but it's keeping our mind and our heart focused on Jesus is what sustains us. We have the responsibility of actively keeping our minds fixed on this truth. Christ is ultimately one who pursues us, opens our eyes, saves us, redeems us, and sustains us. But he's done all this for us. What more shall we even fear? Because fear, fear again, has been this currency in this, this season of the world. But we as Christians do not operate in that. Our trust in Christ sustains our peace. So Jesus tells us clearly that he will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Why? Because our minds are on him. Sometimes we, we, we try to make it, we, over, we overcomplicate it. But it's because our minds are stayed on him that we enter into a perfect peace. So we've come into to knowing more of, of, of holiness, power, love, sovereignty, grace of God uh, in which we, we serve him. And it creates in us a greater humility, a dependence, and trust in him alone. Because when the word of God, when all these, the, the, the scriptures from Isaiah that are read from Isaiah 26 to Isaiah 32 to Isaiah 53 that I've read today, when that permeates our, our heart, it changes our thoughts, it changes our actions, and it ultimately, in Christ, changes our entire being. And that's be how we become a new creation in him. So the things of this world begin to lose their power over us as we begin to learn more to fully trust in his love and ultimately the sovereignty of Christ. Amen. And so let's let, let Jesus today be the assurance, be the sustainer of our peace today, and let's see God do amazing things in our lives. Amen? Amen. Here's Apostle Joe. God is so good. I'm going to explain why I said that. 
Jeff's talking about peace. I'm going to share five words with you. The first one was live unafraid. Isn't that just like God? That we were prayer choosing out. God gave me five very specific words to speak um, over your life. He spoke it into my life and for the people online and all around America that watch on YouTube, Facebook, and everywhere else. So he spoke on peace. And the first word I'm going to share is live unafraid. So why do you think that is? Because you're about to do some big things that's going to scare you to death. 41% excited. Okay, so one more thing real quick. Um, March 19th and 20th, we're having a revival weekend for all of the visitors and people online that watch. You can come in on a Saturday night. Did you know, this is crazy, out of this small congregation, almost every week somebody gets a hotel room, flies in, drives in from all over America, I mean, in the past month, I'm blown away. We've had people from Arizona, Washington State, um, Tennessee, Canada. Had some people message me from Canada. They're going to be here in about two weeks. They're flying in because they want to experience the power and the presence of the Lord. And so we're going to have a weekend where people cannot just come in on a Sunday morning, but they can come in on a Saturday night. So March 19th and 20th, we're going to have, uh, we have a really great name for it, Roar Weekend. Pretty awesome, right? All right, so let's get into this. Live unafraid. Do you know why people don't do what they're called to do? It's not because they're really scared to do something. They're scared they're going to succeed. People are so scared of success. One of the number one things people battle in life, well, what if I succeed? I would rather stay with everybody else. What if I, I, I lay hands on somebody and they don't get healed? Well, what if I sow that big seed and that seed doesn't come back? It's a boomerang, y'all. It's coming back, and it's bringing friends with them. And so you got to understand that you got to step out on faith. What if I try to do something? What if, I remember, let me tell you how bold I am. First time I, I was going to call Autumn, I started stuttering, even thinking about it. Um, I dialed the phone for two hours and kept hanging up. Okay, now we didn't have these cute little phones like this. I had to go, and I would hang up for two hours. I was so scared. But then when I, I really prayed, and I just knew that it was the Lord's will. And so a lot of times in life, you do things, and, and right when you get up to the biggest breakthrough, people give the devil credit when he doesn't deserve any credit. Y'all ready for this? Y'all love me, right? That, that's, that's a cue for here it comes, okay? You're the reason you don't have breakthrough. Okay, 14%, okay? The other 86 is like, I don't believe that. Well, listen, you're the reason you don't have breakthrough. If you would learn to get some fight inside of you, if you would learn how to fast and pray and slap the devil with the word of God, it is a sword. Okay, when you learn to fight, you will get every single thing that God has promised you. And, and that's one of the, the biggest problems that we have is we don't stand on the promises. Now, l let me tell you something. Put yourself under pressure. If you're not under pressure, you're probably not doing something right. Put yourself under pressure. When, when you're sitting there in a service and God drops a prophetic word, you got to get under that word and take it upon you. Actually, that prophetic word turns into a mantle if you didn't understand because you'll never step into who you really are until you accept the call of who you really are. And when you step out on the call, then he will equip you. He's not going to equip you before you step out, okay? Peter didn't know he could walk on water until he did. David didn't know he could slay Goliath until he did. Samson didn't know he, he could kill the lion until he did. You got to step into something and do something that you never knew that you could do, okay? And so you got to understand that when you get a prophetic word, when you get a promise from God, you need to spend some time equipping yourself. That's why pro athletes have a thing called off-season. You got to get, get ready to step in that because when you step in it, if you're not ready... <laughs> it might not be good for you. So to do what God has called you to do, you got to get ready in the off seasons. Psalms 4 and 8, it says, Now because of you, Lord, I will lie down in peace, and sleep comes at once. Listen, do you know what sleep comes at once means? It's when you lay your head on your pillow, you're going to sleep. I remember when I was younger, still young, but I was younger, I would have nights where I would set up and I tried to act like I had it all together. I didn't have nothing together. And I was just, and my mind would run, my mind would race. And then I learned Zephaniah 3 and 17, and that he would sing over us. When, when you have peace, 
You can have almost everything out of whack in your life. The enemy coming in, you're trying to push and do great things for God, and you can lay down knowing God will fight your battles. As Jeff was preaching, you can live in complete peace, and you don't know how you're going to pay your bills. You don't know how you're going to have a breakthrough. Oh, man, I forgot what I was talking about. Breakthrough. That's why God told me to speak on breakthrough. Isn't it funny how we had breakthrough? Guarantee, can you put that picture up? Oh, wait, before you, okay. See that right there? Let me tell you what happened. Y'all know I just do what God says. So I was in here praying, my, my, my cute little prayers, drinking my coffee, and the Holy Spirit says, walk out in the parking lot. So I walk out in the parking lot holding my coffee, and the Lord says, get down on your knees and worship me. I'm like, okay, I'm going to be that guy. And so I'm up there. Okay, here's my cup. Here's my hand. I'm on my knees like this. And I said, God, send a breakthrough. Open up the heavens. Today, for the people of Roar, it's cloudy. I woke, I looked up, and that's what it was. There was a hole right there. And uh, there was an office over there. There were some people that were working for Flying Burger. They was looking, I'm like, <laughs> is this me, y'all? Is this me? And so this is how we roll. And so I was like, God, that's a sign. And so I took a picture of it. Picture's worth a thousand words because I'm believing for the heavens to open up over your life today. And every day you should wake up believing. Uh, probably about five days ago, it was five days or five months, I'm horrible with time. But I remember, I don't really have bad days, but I had the chance I could have had a bad day. And I remember I said, I just want to go to bed and get this day over with. And God, do what you do. Angels, do what y'all do. And I'm going to wake up. The next morning, I woke up at like 4. I was like, hey, I'm so ready for this day. It's going to be the greatest. I say this every day. It's going to be the greatest day of my life. And I woke up, and I said, what happened to all that stuff yesterday? I don't even know. But I got peace, the peace of God that passes all understanding. So let's get back to the word. Um, Philippians 4, I mean, excuse me, Psalms 4 and 8. Now because of you, Lord, I will lie down in peace and sleep, and it will come at once. No matter what happens, I will live unafraid. Have you ever faced your day and said, I don't care what comes my way. I will live unafraid. I'm trying to die to the opinions of people. Anybody care what people think? This is what you need to say over yourself every day. I don't care what anybody thinks about me besides Autumn. You don't say Autumn. You say your spouse or whoever. But I don't care what anybody thinks about me. I'm out there on my knees, hands up. I might end up on the paper, more glory to the Lord. And I'm going to do whatever he's called me to do. Some of those crazy prophetic words I put out on, on Facebook and YouTube, boy, people come at me and then they come to pass and it's like El Silencio, that they don't say anything anymore. But I say some crazy stuff on there and then it comes to pass and it just proves that when you step out on God, he'll do anything that he's called you to do. He's just looking for somebody who will live unafraid. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Listen, he's not going to harm you. And he wants to prosper you. So quit being scared. Live unafraid. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Listen, if you could see what he had for you, it would blow your mind. It would blow your mind if you actually saw what he had for you. Proverbs 31, 21. She is not afraid of tribulation. Women, if you don't know it, there's something going on. With, with the women of the world today, there's an anointing on you to thrive and go forth. And it says, and all of her household is covered in a dual garments of righteousness and grace. Now, you know what grace means. It has, uh, has a few meanings. But one of them is the grace of your anointing. You have righteousness. Boy, they're having fun in Kiss Church. We might all just go back there. But there, you live in righteousness. Walk in the anointing, the grace, the calling that is on your life. Don't let anybody pigeonhole you. Go for it. The second word that I had, I got in prayer choosy, was align with God and the devil is harmless. Do you know why people have fear in their life? Because they're not fully aligned with God. When you're fully aligned with God, the enemy, nobody can say anything that will get you off counter one bit. Your emotions. You know why people don't do what they're called to do or they don't live in faith? Their emotions. Most people have a strong spirit, man. But most people... What, what they have is a problem with their emotions. That something happens, like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? Well, your calling is still the same, but you're emotionally unstable. You got to get strong in that. The devil really can do you no harm unless you buy into the lie that he is speaking over your life. Hey, if y'all didn't know this, a lot of times he used a close 
family, friends, relatives, and co-workers to do his dirty work. Um, so just, there you go. Ephesians 2.10, we have become his poetry, a recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us. Everybody's going to fulfill their destiny if you run with them. And it says, for we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one. Listen, when you're joined to him, you cannot be unjoined unless you choose to be unjoined. I want to be so close to the Lord that, you know, when when the Bible says that we are hidden under the shadow of the wings of the Almighty, I am hid, okay? And so when you're hid with him, you're not going to worry about what's going on. John 14, 26, but when the Father sends the spirit of holiness, the one who is made to set us free, he will teach you in all things. So here's the thing. When you go to prayer every day, say, God, I want Holy Spirit to speak to me about where I'm ignorant, because as Will Rogers said, yeah, I'm quoting Will Rogers in church, he said, everybody's ignorant in something. Everybody is ignorant in something. And when you come against something in life and you don't know how to steward it, say, Holy Spirit, teach me. Your word says you will teach me in all ways. And you know what? Usually when the Holy Spirit does that and teaches me something, it is 100% the opposite of what I thought it was going to be. That is why a lot of times our our lives are off balance because we're not flowing with the power of the Holy Spirit. When God leads you into something, he will send you all the way through. See, what happens a lot of times, you go into battle, you go through the valley of the shadow of death. It's not death, it just looks like it and feels like it. But but he wants you to go all the way through it. Quit camping out where he wants you to go through. If he's given you an idea, push that joker all the way through. A lot of times that we like to figure out things on our time. It doesn't work like that. You got to roll with the Lord. When it's harvest season, I don't care if you got to stay up late. It's harvest season. Let me tell you something. It's harvest season right now. You've got to push through and push in to the things of God. Romans 12 two. Stop imitating the ideas and the opinions of the culture around you. If your culture could heal you, it would have already healed you. If the culture could have fixed things, it would have already fixed things. Listen, it's not going to do anything. The power of God Almighty has to show up, and he has to use you and me. I mean, you got to understand, um, we talk about, you know, the seven mountains and religion and education and, and, and medical things and all of this stuff. There, There is new coming to everything. There, there's new political leaders, new celebrities being raised up, new ministers being raised up, new businesses being raised up, new power couples that are going to teach other people how to to move forward and to live a godly life. New conservative voices that are coming up. Different people are doing so many different things. Find out what he's called you to do and throw your life into it. Now listen, we ain't got no backup in us, okay? If you learn to have no backup in you, you will do, whenever you do anything great, you're going to have resistance. Welcome it. Man, you ever you ever shot something out of a rubber band like maybe in school or or wherever, or something, or, or a slingshot. Man, you got to pull it back and get that resistance. You think that, man, you ever had a rubber band break on you or a slingshot break on you? It hurts. And if you don't cuss, you're truly sanctified. But when you pull something back, you think it's going to break, but the further you go, some of you are at a breaking point, but you're not going to break. You're going to be shot out further. Man, this is your season. Understand it. Third word God gave me this week was shameless. Never be ashamed of who you are, Christ, or the things that you've been called to do. Man, I remember first time I started doing videos, and I was like, man, who in the world wants to listen to a 40-something-year-old guy do videos? Man, it makes no sense whatsoever. But the Holy Spirit and Matt kept telling me I need to do it. And so we kept doing it. Things were turning out pretty good. A lot of times you get ready to to do something, something worthwhile. Man, you're, you're, you're going to feel sometimes like this is not who I thought I was. Let me tell you something. I was listening to a guy named Ed Millett and John Maxwell the other day, and they were talking, and they said the first dream you usually have in life is not your real God dream. It is a very good dream that you glean part of it maybe from your parents or friends or somebody. And I remember John Maxwell said, you know, I've, I've done all these things in my life, and one day the Lord shifted me. And my life exploded. Some of you are on the verge of that little shift 
in your life completely being changed forever. Now, if you think your life is about your, your, you, you may got to remember we're Christians, we're Christ-like. Jesus' life wasn't about him. It was about everybody else that he could impact. Our lives are laid, we're laid down lovers of the Lord. What we do, I don't care what you do. You, you may be a school teacher. You may be a doctor. You may be a whatever you are, business owner. Your service to humanity changes everything. Man, I just, it, whatever you do, you're doing it for the service and the benefit of mankind. Now, let's get into this shameless word. Um, Romans 1.16, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Okay, let me tell you, I don't know how your relationship is with the Lord. Mine's crazy. Um, but, I mean, when I, when I got, I rededicated my life for like the seventh time. Um, I was like really serious this time. But I remember I would be like, you know, people like, what have you been doing? I'd be like, oh, you know church and you know stuff and then one day the holy spirit i said god break me from being timid on being a christian okay if you ask <laughs> you're going to receive so i i was this this is me but i was walking through walmart one day and the holy spirit says yell my name and uh what's my name <laughs> and I, i'm like jesus loud as i can and everybody's looking i'm like I'm like, okay, I'll be in a restaurant, and I remember the Holy Spirit should stand up and say my name, and I stood up, and he's like, it ain't high enough, so I stood up on the chair, and he said, it ain't high enough, y'all, I stood up on the table, and I just yelled, Jesus, at the top of my lungs, and I was like, oh, Lord, I asked for you to break me, and you're going to break me, and I said, Lord, teach me how to witness, and man, we're at Walmart, and there's this big biker dude, 178 tats, I just made that up. More piercings than you could imagine. The Holy Spirit says, go witness to him. I'm like, oh, Lord, couldn't you give me some little 98-year-old church lady just to witness to her or something? And I walked up. He said, oh, man, I'm a believer. And it's just whatever, if you, whatever you want to do in life, you will have a test. And you will break through every ounce of safeness that you could ever imagine. Seven people like that. Okay, we're going to change the world. And so when you, when you want to be shameless of something, you can't care what anybody thinks about you. You cannot care what anybody thinks about you. And so that's the reason people don't move forward. They're ashamed or embarrassed of what people would think. You just got to go for it. Go for it with everything that you got. Psalms 34, 5, gaze upon him, join your life with his, and joy will come. You hear me? If, if you need joy in your life, join it with his. That's all you got to do. There you go. There is the secret. Join your life with his and you'll have joy. How's it going to work out? I ain't got no clue. How's this going to work? I don't know. I just know I'm happy in the struggle. Well, I'm happy in the breakthrough. If I feel good, I, I have joy. If I feel bad, I still got joy. I mean, whatever's going wrong in my life, I promise you I'll find something to find some joy in. You just got to learn to have joy and live life with no shame whatsoever. Do you know the greatest place to be in life is free? When you're free, man, when you're free, you just don't care. You just live life carelessly. And when you're full of the power of the Holy Spirit, whoo, it's show enough fun. And, you know, it's just God honors that. All right, I'm trying to stay on because I got a word, but I'm getting really fired up. 2 Timothy 2.15, always be eager to present yourself before God as a perfect and mature minister without shame. Crickets. Insert crickets there. Okay. Always be eager to present yourself before God as a perfect and mature minister without shame. So what does that mean? Here I am, God, use me in whatever you want me to do. Every time I do that, he gives me the craziest assignment that always has fruit. But I'm like, oh, Lord. There must be some flesh left because you crucifying it today. And it says, as one who correctly explains the word of truth. When you know the word of God, you are dangerous because he will put you on an assignment. It, it, it could be 7,281 against you and they don't stand a chance because you got the word. Man, you're going to come in and be like, boy, I, I don't know how this is going to work out, but I got the word. And, and here, here's why this is important. Okay, people don't like this, but here we go. Another word I got, fourth word, was give an account. You know, you're going to give an account for every prophetic word and promise that
that you've ever been given. Once again, come on now, this is it. This is why we, I live my life aggressively for God. Because as much as he speaks and I do, I get more. It's the parable of the talents. So the more that you do, the, 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 when you do things in life, when God moves you, when God promotes you, when he gives you an assignment, a prophetic word, you steward it. When he gives you an insecurity to, to, to break down and annihilate and kill that insecurity because it's killing you if you didn't know. But you, as you step through that, you will always get more. So let's see how much we can get done in life. Y'all want to? Y'all want to see how much we can get done in life? I mean, max your life out for the things of God. Romans 14, 12. Therefore, each one of us must answer for himself and give a personal account of our own life before God. So one day, you're going to be standing before God, and they're going to have some blueprints. The Bible calls them scrolls, and they're going to roll them out. This is what you were called to do. You go, oh, man, I didn't know I was supposed to. Remember that time I told you this and this and this, and then you had like 17 confirmations, and you just bypassed them all? This is what you were called to do. I don't know if anybody's ever hit 100%, but it sure would be good. I ain't get a whole lot of hundreds in my life, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get some hundreds in the kingdom. I'm going to try to do it all. So here's the thing. Not even your spouse knows exactly what you're called to do, but you do. And it's hidden behind your fear and your insecurity. The best life you could possibly live is in the exact middle of God's perfect plan for you. And we can find it. Every one of us can. But it's not going to be easy. Is it going to be fun? I think it's fun. But when you learn to have warfare and you learn to, you know, to break through warfare, it doesn't mean anything to you. Victory is always ours. Victory is always ours. Uh, my dad's dad always told me that victory in Jesus was the greatest song ever written. And, and he said, every day of your life, you got to have victory in Jesus. And I just thought he was talking about a, a hymn. I'm like, that's cool, that's cool. But no, really, we can have victory every day. We can have a victory every day. We just don't have the victory. We are a victory, and we can have victory over everything uh, Matthew 12, 36. And you can be sure of this. When the day of judgment comes, everyone will be held accountable for every careless word that they have spoken. Whew, thank God for repentance. Um, this is why I hate negativity and I hate excuses. Because when God speaks, we make excuses of why we can't. And that's right, we can't. But when, when we make a declaration... Hey, time out. We're going to have a time out here. Do you know why I like declarations and decrees? Because they're not full of negativity and excuses. When God says you can do something or you can walk in health or you can walk in finances or your marriage can be restored or whatever, this curse is broken off of your family. Well, I've always, my family's always been this. No, I declare that it breaks with me. And so when people say, well, my family's all had high blood pressure, well, I declare it breaks with me. There is a reason why I have this. Sometimes it's spiritual. Sometimes it's natural. Okay, study both sides. You can break. I believe you can break every generational curse over your family. Most of it, I'm just going to tell you, is spiritual more than physical. I promise you that. Whoever told you it wasn't, they lied. And so you can make declarations and decrees and break things off of your life. That's why when you make negativities and excuse, I did something the other day. It was so rude. It was just rude. I was talking to this lady that asked me a business question. She was negative. I just hung up on her. It, 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 I just did. And she called back and said, hey, I think we, we, our, our phone line broke. I said, no, I just wanted to end that conversation. But if you want to start back, we can start over. And uh, I don't do negative. I don't do excuses. And she said, oh, well, okay. No one's ever done that to me before. I said, well. It's just a new season, new season. Okay, sorry. Um, you know why? Because I don't have time to listen to that type of stuff. I, I want the right stuff in my mind, but because I got a lot to do and a lot to accomplish. You know, I'm 47 years young, and I really believe I've done about 5% of what I'm going to do in my life, 5%. I was going to say 10, but I don't want to give myself an escape. So I feel that the rest of my life, I'm going to do 95% more than I've done right now. I just got a lot to do. I don't know how you think. And what I don't get done, my, my floor, my ceiling will be my three kids' floor. And, my, I mean, and so what my ceiling 
they're going to stand upon. And that's what legacy is. It carries on. And it goes from generation to generation. I, I've got spiritual kids that they're, they're going to, I'm going to give something and I'm going to pass a baton. It's about a relay race, okay? It's almost like a baton, doesn't it? You just got to find people to pass it off to that can build. Do you know a lot of times you're actually called to build something that's not for you to maintain? You're called to build it just to give it away. Because some people don't have a starting anointing, but they got a finishing anointing. Okay? And so you're going to start some stuff just to give it away. Like there's sometimes I start stuff and um, I just give it away. You're going to start some stuff and give it. Some of the stuff you're going to start is actually for your kids. It's not even for you. Some stuff you're starting, you're struggling with because it's not in your gift mix, but it will fit your kid perfectly. But they may not have the finances or the mindset to start it, but they can come in. That's why some people start churches and some people get churches that are already established. Because pioneering something's rough. But let me tell you something. There's some pioneers in this room. Pioneers, we don't quit, y'all. If we don't have a problem, we look for one to break, you know? You've got to have that breakthrough attitude. Okay, so this is, the, this is what I'm trying to say. This was the real word. That was just the warm-up. The real word is this. I was praying, and I felt the Lord say that you're going to have a breakthrough in your life that is better than you've ever had before. I, I don't know where you're at in life and your relationship with God, your ministry, your business, your health. I'm promising you and declaring in the name of Jesus you are about to have the biggest breakthrough of your life, and you better position yourself for it. You better get ready for it, okay? This is a, let's just say that this wooden, whatever you'll call it, pulpit, that there was an outpouring coming right, just straight down. But let's say that I had a tub that was from here to here. I would only get 50% of it. I want to position myself because I want the biggest breakthrough that I've ever had. And so I called my head intercessor. I said, so what you got? You're about to walk in the biggest breakthrough you've ever had in your life. I'm like, oh, come on. And, and she said, and everybody that's connected to you, they're about to receive one too. And I said, okay. She said, you tell everybody at the church. And I talked to her this morning. She said that you're about to walk in the greatest breakthrough, but you're going to have to fight a little bit for it. Not a whole, whole lot. But you're going to fight a little bit for it. So don't think it's coming easy. The enemy's not going to just step back and let you have it. Oh, but he's a defeated foe. So we're warriors in here, guys. Mark 10, 27, Jesus looked at them and replied, With people, it's impossible, but not with God. God makes everything possible. Did you know that? God makes everything possible. Everything that you want to do is possible. It's possible. Luke 18, 27, Jesus responded, what appears humanly impossible is more than possible with God. For God can do what man cannot. That's something I've always tried to teach my kids. That everything that you want to do is possible. Don't ever dream things that are possible. Those boring stuff. Dream only impossible things. Don't take a job that doesn't challenge you. Don't marry somebody that doesn't challenge you. Don't do anything with your life that's just easy. Get something that, that makes you. I remember when God told me I was going to write books. He put that S on the end of it, plural. I'm like, Lord, whoo, I don't know how I'm going to do that. I didn't pay much attention in school. I, I just, I mean, I just, I just, it's not my thing to write. Holy Spirit spoke, said there's more ways than one to write, to write a book. Do you know that we've written books about four or five different ways? Because I tapped into the Lord, I tapped into that word, and I said, show me how to write. Show me how to do things better. Now we got a pattern. Got a new book coming out in a few weeks, y'all. And, and it's just things are roll, rolling now. How, why is that? Because when you're with God, he'll make it all possible. I've walked in the sanctuary. I have a, when I walk in, I just drop things and, and spend time in prayer. And my mind's full, but I, my joy's full too. I walk in, and he just starts explaining things. Why does he explaining things? Because he knows when he tells me something, I'll go do it. I, I just, I know, I just know that I can do what he told me I could do. And here's what I quit doing. I quit telling people what it was. Because you know what they told me? They said, there, there's no way you can do what you just said. There's no way. But you know what? I don't do it. I just show them. I just, I just boom, here I am. And so you could tell people, and they will rain on your parade Find some people that, that just think you can do anything. 
in your life. You, you got those people? Man, I, I don't ever tell people. I mean, you can tell me some crazy stuff, and I'll be like, yeah, sure. Just don't hold me liable for nothing. I mean, I'll just tell people just to go for it. Do whatever's in your heart. It might not make any sense, but just do it. Never be so traditional and stuck in religion or a lifestyle that will make you miss the flow of God. Because the way he's flowing right now, we ain't never flowed like this. Man, God's doing more things, shaking up America in every way possible. And I absolutely love it. Because people are about to see that God is in charge. Galatians 6 and 9, and let us not grow weary. Wait, wait, hang on. I promise you this. I promise you this. He's doing more behind the scenes than you could ever imagine. We're about to be we're about to see some things in America shift. We're we're about to see some things that are happening in America. It's going to happen in so many. It's going to start in the church, but then you're going to see it in just all aspects of life. But God is moving. God is raising people up that is going to just shake some people. Y'all y'all tracking with me? I mean, he, you, you're, you're going to hear people say things that makes no sense to the way the culture thinks. But you're about to see it. You're about to see it in, in America. Galatians 6 and 9, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season you shall re reap if you do not lose heart. I promise you, if you don't lose heart, you're going to see what you want to see. I remember, um, some of y'all may or may not know who Chuck Pierce and Dutch Sheets are, but Dutch Sheets has been praying for 2020 for some things in America. And he said, man, I just, I knew I was going to see some things in America and America turn around and I haven't seen it. Well, Chuck Pierce is a prophet and, and he came to Dutch Sheets and he said, two times he told him, he said, look, you're going to see it, but God needed to do some things before you see it. You're going to see everything that you prayed for. You're going to see everything come to pass that you've been praying for. But it's going to happen differently than you thought. And it's not on your time frame. It's on God's. But it's going to happen. I'm telling you, what you're believing for is going to happen. And you're going to see it. You just got to believe bigger. And listen, you know, I talk about the spiritual ride at, at Disney, the rock and roller coaster. And I'll tell you why it's spiritual to me. You have no idea where you're going. You have no idea what the track looks like because it's in pitch black. But, oh, man, I actually threw my shoulder out on that ride one time. But I loved it, and I was in pain, and I rode it again because it was so fun. A lot of times you have some bruises on some trials in life, but you're like, I like it. This is where we are with God. You don't know how it's going to work out. You ain't got a clue. It's about to be fast. You're about to get flipped upside down, and when it's over, your shoulder might be hurting, but you'll be like, let's do it one more time. Let's just do it one more time. And if you'll get in the line, if you'll position yourself, God's about to take you on a ride. That you, People call me all the time, how in the world do y'all do what you do? I, say, I ain't got no clue, and I'm not going to try to figure it out. I'm just going to get back in line, and I'm going to go again. I'm just going to keep rolling with the Lord, and I'm going to ride this ride till I can't ride it anymore. And that's going to be in about 50 years. And so we're just rolling. I'm fired up. I'm going to try to stop because I it, we're going to pray for some people. You're about to have a breakthrough. Now, when I walked outside with my holy cup of coffee, um, that's one of my strong anointings, my coffee making ability. I was walking outside, and, and when I looked up after I got off my knees, there was it, was, it was, clouds were there, but there was one little break, and there was a ray of light, just a ray of hope. I'm telling you, there's a ray of hope coming in today, and you're going to do it. Now, we've already prayed for y'all once, we're going to do it again. And here's something, if you don't need prayer, here's what I ask you to do. For a few moments before you go, close your eyes and just ask the Lord to speak to me, God. Just speak to me. God's so eclectic. He can speak to all of us at the same time about different things. And watch what he does. Watch what he does in your life. And watch what he speaks to you. People tell me all the time, I came to your church, I got healed. I came to your church, I got a business idea. I came to your church and God spoke to me about an old relationship. God, I came to your church and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He didn't say anything. People don't say anything about ministers. They don't say anything about the worship team or the preachers. God spoke to them. And when you hear that, and people said, man, I had unforgiveness in my heart for, for
for somebody for 30 years and ain't but 28 years old, you know, or whatever it may be. And they're saying, but, but I came and heard the Lord. This is your season. So, Father God, I declare over everybody today that this is their day. This is their moment. And they will have breakthrough. Time out. Clay and Liz, I just feel the Lord saying just to speak over you, to speak life over you, and just to prophesy the word of the Lord. I declare the enemy has time out, time. the enemy has fought this couple the last six months like you could not believe. But they're here. And looking pretty, look at them. I'm telling you, they are here. They are fired up. And the enemy has fought them. I mean, fought them. And they're here. And they're ready to go. So, Lord, I declare in the name of Jesus, health 100% completely restored. Destiny restored because it will be fulfilled. Their businesses will thrive. Their health will thrive. And I declare many more years, fruitful years of ministry, of life, of business, to spend with their family and their friends. And I just declare over them, Lord, even new visions, new adventures to come forth. And Lord, I pray that their ministry is more powerful than ever. And I declare life and blessing and favor over our friends in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.